Okay, in this video I'm going to discuss the classical example of gene regulation, and that is the lactose operon. So, what's important to discuss with the lactose operon? Well, first of all, what is the lactose operon? It's basically a regulatory circuit for lactose catabolism, and it consists of these gene, three structural genes. So basically an operon. Let me, let me give you my definition of an operon, which is a little different than what I'm going to say here, um, which is more like the textbook definition, which is just it's a group of genes transcribed from a common promoter. But the way I think of it is that it's the regulatory elements along with the structural genes. Okay, so it's, a, it's the regulatory elements and structural genes um, together. And basically those structural genes are called like Z, like Y, and like A. Okay, and they're all transcribed from a common promoter. So beginning with like Z, because that's kind of the first one we usually talk about, the product of like the is beta galactosidase, and beta galactosidase cleaves lactose. Okay, so lactose is a disaccharide. It consists of one glucose monosaccharide and one lactose monosaccharide. So you have you have to cleave those. Basically, we only use monosaccharides for energy sources. In in this case, we're talking about E. coli, so we're talking about bacteria, but still we're talking about the use of monosaccharides. So it cleaves it to glucose and to lactose. Um, like Y encodes for lactose permease, okay, and what lactose permease does is it's basically an integral membrane protein that allows for the transport of lactose into the cell. So if we're going to use lactose as a fuel source, then we need some way to get it into the cell. And the way that it enters the cell is lactose permease proteins. Okay, they're membrane proteins, they allow for the import of, of lactose. Um, like A, it encodes for thiogalactosidase transacetylase However, we really don't know what the role of LAC-A is in this whole process. So since we really don't know much about LAC-A, I'm not going to talk too much about it. And to begin the discussion of, say, now that we've kind of defined what the structural genes are, how, you know, what they, what products they produce, and what an operon is, we can now talk about the process, just how this gene regulation occurs. And um, in, the lap, in the absence of lactose, okay, this operon, this lactose operon, is repressed, okay, and it's repressed by this protein product, okay, that's of the regulatory gene LAC-I. That's not all that important. What's important to know is that you have a repressor protein. This repressor protein is bound in at the operator region, okay. There's two regions that are really important in this case. You get a promoter region, which is where we, where our RNA polymerase is going to bind, and then you have a operator region where this repressor protein is going to bind, and they slightly overlap. So that's how this repressor protein basically prevents the RNA polymerase from um, binding. But a little more detail I have here, again, it depends on your class, it depends on what you need to know. If you need to know more detail, I have some more detail about the te it's a tetramer um, of black eye repressor protein forms in the cell and binds to the region of DNA called the operator. So the, the, it binds to the operator region, like I said before, and uh, we, we call that LACO. And it partially overlaps with lag ZYA promoter, which are all things I just said in with a little less detail. So this regulatory protein or repressor protein is continuously expressed. Okay, so it's expressed at all times. Again, E. coli has a preferred source of energy, and that preferred source of energy is glucose. So if glucose is present, this lac operon is not being transcribed. These are these this is not being expressed. Okay. Um, in the event that glucose is absent though and lactose is present then we're going to see that this operon is actually going to start working. So basically the RNA polymerases can, cannot transcribe the genes, okay, the structural genes. It blocks the promoter region. This, this repressor protein blocks the promoter region. So when we have, so the next logical question would be then what happens once we have lactose added to the medium? Okay, when the lac operon, well, the lac operon is expressed at slightly higher levels, but it's not, it's not completely expressed at this point. At this point, we're not transcribing these genes. So, basically, what has to happen is one, you, there's a couple of things that are essentially requirements for the lactose operon to be transcribed. The first one is basically lactose has to be present. Okay, if lactose is present, we can start the process, but that doesn't mean the genes are transcribed. They're not going to be transcribed. If glucose is present and lactose is present at the same time, then there's no transcription of these genes. Okay? 
But if lactose is present, what happens first is some of the lactose enters the cell, a small amount, and this lactose is converted to a molecule called allolactose. And this allolactose basically activates the operon. And how does it activate the operon? It binds to the repressor protein and, re and removes the repression. Okay, so it removes the repressor protein from the operator region. So now we no longer have RNA polymerase being inhibited or RNA polymerase being prevented from binding to the promoter. Okay, so now the promoter is essentially open. But that doesn't mean it's going to be transcribed. And the reason that it's not going to be necessarily transcribed is that if glucose is present, we have one additional requirement, and that is that we have a CAF CAP and cyclic AMP complex, okay, CAF cyclic AMP complex that has to bind to the promoter in order to fully transcribe these genes, fully express these genes. So what has to happen now is that glucose must also be absent. If glucose is absent, then adenylate cyclase, which is converting ATP to cyclic AMP, is going to be fully functional. See, normally the glucose that enters the cell, what happens is the glucose inhibits adenylate cyclase. And if glucose inhibits adenylate cyclase, then we have low, then we naturally have a low concentration of cyclic AMP. If we have a low concentration of cyclic AMP, then we can't form the cyclic AMP cap complex. If we can't form the cyclic AMP cap complex, then we're not going to be able to activate the prom activate the promoter. So if we can't act so if we can't begin the promoter, if we can't get the promoter to begin to be active, then we have a problem still. So if glucose is absent and lactose is present, the operon is expressed. If glucose is present and lactose is present at the same time, it's still the, uh, the lac operon will not be expressed. If lactose is present and no glucose, then we have full expression of the lactose operon. So that's basically all the detail that I really want to give about the lactose operon. That's how it works. This is kind of a diagram explaining how, you know, explaining basically the same stuff I just said with pictures. So we have an operator region, we have a promoter region. We know that the uh, to the operator region there's this product of lac I which is a protein, and that is binding, it's a repressor protein, it prevents transcription, okay, it prevents RNA polymerase from binding and transcribing these structural genes. When lactose is absent, or when lactose and glucose are present together, okay, so only if lactose is the only source of um, energy for the E. coli, then we're going to see this lactose operon being used. If not, then it's not going to be, these genes aren't going to be expressed. So what happens here is, as you can see, RNA polymerase can bind, okay, and we have this lactose, and we have this um, repressor protein, the lac repressor is um, bound to the operator region and it's slightly covering the promoter, so it's preventing us from, it's preventing us from transcribing these genes, okay, so transcription is blocked. Now what happens is lactose can enter the cell, small amount, it's converted to allolactose, allolactose binds with the, with the repressor and inactivates the repressor protein. The repressor protein is removed and the RNA polymerase can now bind to the promoter. Now, of course, the requirement that they're leaving out here that, that's, that, that's absolutely required as well is that we have that cap cyclic AMP complex. If that cap cyclic AMP complex it doesn't also bind to the promoter, then there's no way that we're going to transcribe these genes. Okay, so, and that, of course, relies on the fact that we need high concentration of cyclic AMP in the cell. The only way to get that is to remove the inhibition of adenylate cyclase by glucose.